In this video, we are going to look at how light rays travel through lenses to form the images that we see with them. To create the images that I have in this video, I started with the ray optic simulation, which can be found at the following web page. I highly recommend exploring this simulation. It's really a lot of fun. I'm going to start by talking about something called refraction. Refraction is what happens when light travels from one medium to another. In this case, when light travels from air to glass. This green bar is a source of parallel beams of light. There are different sorts of lab equipment that can be used to create parallel beams of light. But naturally, distant objects give off beams of light that are very close to parallel. The farther away the object is, the more true this is. When the light rays hit the boundary between the air and glass at right angles to the boundary, they travel straight through. Some of the light reflects, which is why sometimes we see a reflection in a clear glass window. But we're interested in this video in the light that passes through the glass. If the light hits at any other angle than a right angle to the glass, the light rays bend inward when they enter the glass. This happens because the light slows down when it enters the glass, but I won't get into that physics right now. The farther from a right angle the light hits the surface between the air and the glass, the more sharply the light beams bend when they enter the glass. A prism is an interesting optical device because when light enters and exits a prism, it bends twice in the same direction. The bigger the angle at the top of the prism, the more the direction of the light beams change. A lens is similar to a prism but each beam of light hits the lens at a slightly different angle. So each beam of light gets bent a different amount when it goes through the lens. The parallel beams of light coming from the left side all cross each other in a narrow region on the other side of the lens. If we take two lenses that are the same height, but make one of them wider than the other lens. We notice that the distance from the lens where the beams come together is closer on the wider lens than on the narrower lens. On neither lens do the beams all cross in the same point, but they come closer to doing so on the narrower lens than on the wider lens. Ideally, we would like all of these beams to cross at the exact same point. If we block some of the light that's going through the lens and only allow the beams to go through the more central part of the lens, then we get a more finely focused point. And this is fine if we're looking at a really bright object, but if we are looking at a more dim object, we really want all the light we can get. To have the light beams focus more to a point, we need a thinner lens. But in order to make the location where the beams come together closer to the lens, while we're making the lens thinner, we're going to also have to make it shorter. Of course, this shorter lens also gathers less light, so still wouldn't be good for dim objects. Thin lenses focus light better. If your light source is dim, then you would need a much larger thin lens. This lens would focus the light much farther from the lens. So the optical instrument would have to be very large. With a brighter light source, a smaller thin lens can be used, which makes for a smaller optical instrument. Often for analysis, we use what is called an ideal converging thin lens. With this kind of lens, parallel beams of light 
will go through the lens and converge at a perfect point on the other side. These ideal lenses, of course, don't actually exist, but they're useful for making predictions or designing optical instruments. When the parallel beams go through the lens and converge down to a single point, we call that point the focal point. The distance from the lens to the focal point is called the focal length. If we shine parallel beams of light through the lens the other direction, then we get a focal point on the other side that's the same distance from the lens as the previous focal point was. Now I am taking away the parallel beam of light source and instead using a point light source. A point light source is a source where all the beams of light radiate in all directions from a single point. I'm placing the point light source at the focal point of the lens. The beams of light radiating from the point light source that actually hit the lens move parallel to each other after going through the lens. I am now placing a point light source at a position that's farther from the lens than the focal point is. The light beams that come from this point source and go through the lens converge at a point on the other side of the lens. Now I am placing three point light sources, each the same distance from the lens. It looks a little chaotic with all the light beams going everywhere. But the beams that go through the lens converge at different points on the other side of the lens. Each of those points is the same distance from the lens as each other. Also notice that the points of convergence on the right side of the lens are in the opposite vertical order from the sources that created them on the left side of the lens. Replace those three point light sources with an extended bright object, in this case an arrow. Every point of the arrow on the left side sends out light in all directions. The light that goes through the lens then converges upon a point at the other side. This happens for every single point on the object and what ends up happening is a duplicate of the object is reconstructed on the right side of the lens. We call this duplicate an image. More specifically, we call it a real image. This real image is constructed of pure light. If we placed a screen at this location, the image would be projected onto the screen. We could see this image by looking at the screen, even if we couldn't see the lens or the original object. This is how a movie projector works, how a camera works, and how even the human eye works. If the object were placed closer to the lens than the focal point, something different happens. What happens is similar to what happens with the diverging lens. So instead of talking about that situation, I will move on to the diverging lens. A diverging lens differs from a converging lens in that it curves inward at the middle instead of outward. When parallel beams of light are sent into the lens, instead of going through the lens and coming together in a region on the other side, all the beams diverge away from each other and never cross. Like with the converging lens, we are going to use an ideal diverging thin lens. If we trace back the beams that are diverging on the right side straight through to the other side of the lens, they are heading out as if they came from a single point on the left side of the lens. The light beams were never actually at this point, 
but if you were to look into the lens, it would look like a point light source. Now I will place a point light source somewhere on the left side of the lens. Some of the light beams from the point source will go through the lens. If we trace back the beams from the right side back through to the left side of the lens, it will appear as though the point light source is in a different location. If I place three light sources to the left of the lens and look through the lens, then I will see three light sources in a different location than they actually are. If instead of the three point light sources, I were to place an extended object looking through the lens, it would appear as if the object were in a different location and a different size. We would call what we see a virtual image. It is virtual because the light was never actually in that location. We cannot project this image onto a screen. We cannot see the image unless we look through the lens. When you look through a lens to see an image, it is always a virtual image. Examples of optical devices where you see virtual images are telescopes and microscopes.